I'm Randy Forsetto. I'm a captain on Ladder 305C Shift in Surprise. I'm also part of the Arizona Ladder Operations Cadre. Uh, today we're going to talk about a test we conducted in January on Positive Pressure Attack, PPA. What Positive Pressure Attack is, it's utilizing a fan and a, an exhaust to actually get rid of all the smoke and heat very rapidly by replacing bad air with good air. Yeah, essentially the difference between PPA, positive pressure attack, and PPV, positive pressure ventilation, is the, the stage of the fire that it occurs at. PPA, positive pressure attack, is actually part of the attack. You do it in the initial stages of the fire as, as units get on scene. You actually initiate PPA before hand lines even go in. Positive pressure ventilation, PPV, is what we do historically now. It's after fire control. It's when we go in and actually start isolating uh, the residual smoke to try and get out of each individual room by closing doors and opening up certain windows. We built about a 900 square foot Class A uh, burn structure that we were actually able to do live burns in and collect data on. Um, we had 103 burns and we actually had 17 different agencies participate in the drill. We also had a classroom portion as far as a, in the hands-on. Uh, the, the days of the test we actually had a classroom portion, just about a little 20 minute class to talk about what PPA was and, and why we used to do it and, and how we're doing it now. And then after we got into the live burn, we broke the groups up into three different groups. We had observers inside, which normally there'd be nobody inside in a positive pressure attack evolution in the real world, but we wanted people to see the effects of it. And the other two groups, we had an exhaust group and, and uh, an entry group. The exhaust, they had to coordinate as far as reading smoke, creating exhaust closest to the fire as possible, and they had to relay when the exhaust was done to the entry crew. What the entry crew would do is they'd actually pivot the fan in once the exhaust was completed, and they would begin their attack. Uh, we used an Omega thermocouple and a meter. We had a, a meter that actually recorded temperatures. Um, it was calibrated up to one half degree Fahrenheit, and we actually were able to monitor the, the temperatures in four different areas using four different thermocouples. At the hottest temperature, we were about 1,680 degrees Fahrenheit, and within starting the fan, within 10 seconds, it went down to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Victim survivability by far. Um, it takes away so much heat and smoke rapidly that it increases survivability drastically. The other good part about it is a lot of times when firefighters are under heavy conditions, they actually are driven to their hands and knees and to obtain a search and rescue. It takes a lot of time. Um, by doing positive pressure attack, firefighters are now actually able to enter the structure while standing because the visibility is so good. I think one of the biggest things was people thought it was actually feeding the fire with, with oxygen. Okay? And when you look at it, we really stress the exhaust is the key because now you're not, you're not pressurizing the building. What you're doing is you're creating exhaust about one and a half to two times the size of your entry point. So now you're replacing bad air with good air. The drill was conducted in a Class A combustible burn structure that was approximately 900 feet in size. The structure was framed with 2x4s and lined with two layers of Type X 5 8 inch fire rated drywall. The interior of the structure was separated into multiple burn rooms, utilizing wood pilots, dry straw, and tar paper for burning. Burn rooms had either one or two 4x4 four four foot windows that were covered with plywood that were used as an exhaust opening. A total of 103 live burns were conducted with 17 fire agencies, with all training fire temperatures monitored using four thermocouples placed in different locations within the structure, with temperatures being recorded every two seconds. The person from the first arriving unit that is creating the exhaust needs to be able to read smoke and determine the exhaust that will be utilized closest to the fire. This will create a path of least resistance for heat and smoke to be closest to the fire, not the point at which firefighters are making entry. Generally speaking, the exhaust should be one and a half to two times the size of the attack entrance where the fan is being positioned. It is a necessity that an adequate exhaust closest to the fire be created prior to operating the fan into the structure. It is okay to make multiple exhausts, but they all must be in the same area of origin as the fire. Once an exhaust is created, the person creating it must relay to the crews at the attack point that the exhaust has been done and is now acceptable to direct the fan into the structure and implement positive pressure attack. As the initial truck gets on scene and determines that PPA is going to be utilized, it is acceptable for the entry team to start the fan and to direct the air cone away from the door in efforts to save time. Once the exhaust is created, the entry team makes force entry and turn the fan into the door, then monitor the effects that the fan is having on interior conditions. For best results, the fan is placed four to six feet away from the door, pointed up at a 15 degree angle. It is acceptable to leave a 12 inch gap at the top of the door that is not pressurized. This will allow crews to monitor the smoke conditions. Once crews have waited anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds for interior conditions to clear, it is now acceptable to make entry and obtain a search and rescue and attack the fire. The increased visibility and heat reduction allows firefighters to rapidly obtain an all-clear conducted on their feet instead of while crawling. Once the seed of the fire has been located, the fire may be extinguished utilizing a fog pattern to capitalize on steam conversion. 
with the fan at the firefighter's back, even the smoke and steam created by converting the fire is forced out the exhaust away from fire crews. Our study. Out of 103 burns, we were able to gain the following information. Flashover temperatures of 1,000 degrees were reached within 3 minutes and 45 seconds of fire ignition. Temperatures at the 8-foot level of the fire room averaged 1,687 degrees Fahrenheit were reduced to 418 degrees Fahrenheit within 20 seconds of the fan running. Temperatures at the 2-foot level in the fire room reached 617 degrees Fahrenheit and were reduced to 86 degrees Fahrenheit after 20 seconds. Temperatures at the 8-foot level of the room adjacent to the firefighter where firefighter observers were reached 636 degrees Fahrenheit and dropped to 176 degrees Fahrenheit after 20 seconds, while at the 2-foot level reached up to 354 degrees Fahrenheit and dropped to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. At no point during the test did temperatures ever increase, even between the area of origin of the fire and the exhaust. During steam conversion test, four pallets were lit on fire in a 10-foot by 10-foot room until temperatures reached 1,690 degrees Fahrenheit. After a one-second burst with a fog pattern, temperatures dropped to 376 degrees Fahrenheit and the fire went out. You know, this is just another tool in the toolbox that we can use. A lot of times, one of the most important things we can address before fire condition is ventilation. Uh, this is just another tool where firefighters can actually do it as part of their attack, and it really it, it increases survivability and firefighter safety drastically. Yes, you know, if you just search YouTube, um, there's uh, books out there on it. Fire Engineering has done a lot of stuff on it. Uh, NIST and UL have also done many studies on, on positive pressure attack. There's also two gentlemen from Salt Lake City which actually helped us conduct this test. Chris Garcia and Reinhard Kaufman, they retired from Salt Lake City years ago. And um, they're kind of making the circuit as far as bringing this tactic that's worked for them for many years.